Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here in San, Fr San Jose, not San Francisco, San Jose for the NVIDIA GTC 24 with ZS Carvella, with ZK Research, with Keynote Analysis. Got all the action going on, got the trains going by, but nothing more impressive than a packed house at SAP Center. Jensen Wong was giving the keynote, looked more like a Taylor Swift concert. Taylor can't hold a candle to Jensen's awesome performance. Z, it's great to have you on. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's been like, what, a couple weeks since I've been on theCUBE, so. Yeah. I thought it was a, interesting how Jensen called it a developer conference, because it is certainly much more than that. I think it's, uh, it, it, in fact, the evolution of GTC has been nice too, because it really was a developer conference for a while, but now it has become a, an industry, the industry AI trade show. It's interesting how that sounds like an HPC event. Everyone's going crazy. It's very Steve Jobs-like on one hand, very cult-like in the coolness of this next generation AI wave, but also felt like supercomputing built in. So it's like cloud supercomputing, reInvent meets uh, Apple Developer Conference. Really an incredible momentum. To me, it was a, a point in history where I think the systems revolution is definitely happening. Well, it's, it's all things accelerated computing, and that's really, I think, the nuance that people miss a lot. AI is just another form of accelerated computing, so is the high-performance graphics, so is robotics, computer vision, all those things. It's all wrapped up in AI, but nobody does accelerated computing better than, than NVIDIA. Well, let's get into the highlights. Blackwell sure. is, was announced, that's, that's a, that it replaces Hopper, but Hopper becomes a CPU, the AI super chip, also NVLink switch, the key ingredient as part of this DGX cloud and system, 120 kilowatts in one rack, and Exaflop system in one rack was monster. They call it the spine. It's a neural network. It's, I mean, this is the future system. I joked on Twitter, it looks like a data center. And everyone's like, you're wrong. Like, I was only kidding. What's uh, your take? Well, no, it is a data center. That's in, in a box. Uh, I think one of the interesting aspects of it with Blackwell is now, uh, what, it, what, is a, what is a GPU? Like, what is a chip? Because it's actually two chips bound together, but then if you NV link them together, right, now you've got multiple ones, and then if you put them in a bigger NV link, NV switch, Right, you create a bigger one, and so the, there's a real blurring going on here about where the chip ends and where the system starts. And in fact, I think you really can't differentiate between one of the, between them anymore. And I think I think AI, uh, AI systems are going to come fast. I call it clustered systems. I think this all started, in my opinion, with AWS when AWS created that hyperscale performance. Google, Azure follow. Oracle's now trying to follow. The idea of uh, James Hamilton, when he put together those data centers, they really innovate on the network. If you look at what's going on here in these engineered clustered systems, the connection points between GPUs, NVLink switch makes it happen. So he said on stage, GPUs talking to each other. This is now a new system. So I think you're starting to see the evolution of not just the GPU, but everything around GPUs, plural. Now GPU racks, plural. It's an AI factory, they call it, I call it cluster system, super cloud, whatever you want to call it. This has changed, it's a different market. Uh, it is, and I think it's becoming more network centric. And so that's, uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, we, uh, the, the tailwinds behind NVIDIA are obvious, right? You just look at the stock price. Who else is going to benefit from this, John? Uh, I, I do think pure storage on the storage side, I think Arista on the network side, I think Cisco's got a lot of possible upside as well. Uh, and then of course, NVIDIA builds their own networking gear, but the network, plays a critical role in AI, and I think that's been an underappreciated aspect of AI AI systems for uh, really uh, up until now. Right? When I saw Jason on stage, I'm going to get your reaction to this next comment, because I think this is kind of maybe a key point that not really being talked about, but I felt very much like that was a reinvent wannabe pitch. Like he's saying, we're the cloud, we're the system, we're the AI factory. That's very much kind of the narrative with the way Andy Jass used to talk about Amazon Cloud. Jensen's not saying he's going to be an Amazon wannabe, but it's the same narrative, it's the same movie, we've seen that before. Do you see that same thing that, that on there? Because look at Michael Dell's out there in the audience, all these yeah. hardware vendors yeah. out there, Corwee's out there, This and separate cloud could emerge. Yeah, I think um, the, the tone of it to me was they are trying to now become the center of this AI universe, right? And then they're going to have this huge ecosystem surrounds them. And frankly, when you look at the Expo Hall, it's already become that way, but I think along with that, becomes the responsibility to become a little more visionary. And so when you think back to those early Andy Jassy keynotes and, mm -hmm. and certainly every Steve Jobs keynote, it wasn't just about product. It was a lot, uh, there was a lot of vision. And I think Jensen's trying to take that role now for AI to be not only 
the manufacturer of the infrastructure that makes AI, but the visionary to set the direction of where this goes. I think he hit a home run with the vision. Big fan of what he's doing. I love his speech. I love what they're doing. I love this AI system. I like how he called it a new category. That's kind of a shot across the bow again to the existing incumbents. But you hear words like AI foundry and the ecosystem names. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I got to say, I mean, that sounds very cloud-like to me. You're enabled, not just developers, I mean, 1.3 mil million robotics developers yes. alone, um, all the systems coming together, there's horsepower is there, and you got an ecosystem developing classic enterprise move combined with the developer chops. I, I mean, you got to look at this as saying, if you're Amazon Web Services, you got to go, hmm, what's our relationship with NVIDIA? Well, right, and actually they had a, a, a joint announcement here, and I think they want to be the enabler of more NVIDIA. I think, uh, let's face it, NVIDIA stuff's not cheap. Right? So not everybody can go out and buy a DGX and stick it in their data center. And so unless, if you're not a hyperscaler, I think your path to that largely will be through an Amazon, a Google, or a Microsoft. Now, you could argue that their value gets squeezed a little bit and they all wind up looking the same. Yeah. Uh, but that's where some of the other things that they bring to bear and need to be part of that. Do you think there's a TAM expansion opportunity for NVIDIA without telegraphing to Amazon any competitive things? Because like, I can see a scenario where NVIDIA can say, I want to partner with Amazon. You're a public cloud. I just want to be the AI cloud. I mean, yeah. it's a TAN expansion, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I think the idea here for NVIDIA would be to make sure everybody has access to AI everywhere, whether it's on-prem, through their own systems, or through the cloud. And the cloud's going to allow them to scale into countries where they can't reach, down to smaller businesses, right? Even the some of the stuff they were talking about, digital twin, anything that moves, right? Any yeah. system should have a digital twin. Well, if you're a, a mid-sized bank, right, you, you can't go afford to build your own digital twin, but you can buy that out of the Amazon cloud and then use that as a way to rebuild your, your bank office in the future. Well, like. here's my notes from the five takeaways from the keynote. One is an industry revolution around AI, whole nother way to do business. Number two, new way how software is going to be built with generator. That's the Blackwell connection. Software right and software. Software right and software. And new, uh, the, the new computer will create this new paradigm, this new software, and it's how it's distributed, this whole NIMS. NVIDIA, inference, Machines, no, in, uh, was it NVIDIA, Inference, Machines, was machines, it? I machines, think, yeah. yeah, and NIMS creates a whole new application. That's the foundry idea, and of course robotics, robotics the yeah. physical world. The I convergence don't... between digital and physicals here with AI. I don't know if the industry though, John, has figured out the monetization aspect of AI. Because uh, we, you know, I think NVIDIA has. Yeah. But I think when it gets down to some of the other companies, uh, you, you look at the contact center companies, the security companies that are trying to use AI to make their products better. Um, I, I, when I talk to them about how they're going to monetize it, they're not really sure. So one thing that concerns me here is from an industry perspective, is people are building AI, spend a lot of money building AI into the products, but they haven't figured out how to make money off it. And if they can't, then we wind up with this de deflationary effect for everybody but NVIDIA, and that's ultimately bad for everybody. I mean, it checked all the boxes on all the hype. It had the NIMS, which is the new uh, you know, new way to do that, the API for the cloud, they call it. Then they have this thing called the Nemo Retriever, which is really taking advantage of the whole RAG market, yeah. retrieval augmentation generation, saying, if you use NVIDIA, we're the home for RAG or retrieving. I love that, it was my pet. Head announcement, yeah. pun intended. And of course, DGX Cloud was the key. So this whole AI foundry ecosystem is really built on this, the hype of retriever, engine, API for uh, AI. So he, they're, they, they're calling the NIMS the API for AI. Yeah, historically use the APIs, but this is, I think, an easier way to do it. So. All right, final point, what do you expect for the week? We're going to be all week, we'll see you around. Dave's coming in tomorrow. This is just Monday. What are you expecting to see for the rest of the week? Well, we'll see a lot more partner announcements now that NVIDIA has released all of theirs. And so I, I, I think they, he, Jensen talked about some on stage cohesity, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, but I expect to see a lot more. Uh, one of the aspects I'd like to see more of it that shows sustainability, I think NVIDIA, uh, in, maybe unfairly, gets beat up because uh, the GPUs use a lot more power than traditional CPUs, but there is an argument to be made, though, that the more GPU-enabled systems you have, the less CPU-enabled systems you have, and so that brings down the overall cost of cooling and power. And so I think, uh, but he he alluded to that on stage, but I would like to see NVIDIA hit the sustainability point a lot harder. Zias, good to see you. We'll check in with you later, Analyst Angle, later on the show. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. You're watching theCUBE. More coverage. Stay with go to theCUBE.net, SiliconAngle.com. We'll, Walter Walcott will be on Twitter, LinkedIn, all the channels. Look for us here and let's go inside. As always, great being here.